very special interview that I'm going to do today with a woman who came to Bella Vida Lifestyle Center with her husband. Her name is June Rick. Before she was leaving, I started to talk to her about some history in the Adventist church that I think we all need to hear. Now, I want to read to you first from the scriptures, a warning from Paul to the church. And this is in Acts chapter 20, verse 29. It says, for I know this, that after my departure, grievous wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And Ellen White comments on that verse, and she says, Paul trembled for the church as, looking into the future, he saw the attacks which she must suffer from both external and internal foes. With solemn earnestness, he bade his brethren guard vigilantly their sacred trust. I know that in the scriptures, we can learn from the stories of the past. I'll never forget when we sat and talked that evening about church history, and you started to share some things with me that I have never heard before. But this has to do with conversations that you had with the late Dr. Wil Wilkinson. Wilkinson. That's right. Now, who was Dr. Wilkinson? I went to Tacoma Park, Maryland to join the nursing program. So from about 1954 to 1958, my husband and I were in Tacoma Park while I went through the nursing program. My husband had heard of B.G. Wilkinson, and uh, he started taking me on my days off to Dr. Wilkinson, who was a man in his 80s at that time. And it was the most thrilling thing to sit at this man's feet because he opened up all of the early history of the Adventist church. Mm. Dr. Wilkinson told us that he was the first PhD in our denomination. He had, I guess in his 20s or late teens, found the Adventist message and he ran with it. He went on, became his, got his PhD, and he was hired at Battle Creek College to be professor of, I believe it was history, Greek, and Hebrew. Mm -hmm. uh, and this was at age 25. Wow. He was a young, a very brilliant young man. As he worked there, of course, Ellen White was also at bat in the Battle Creek area, and Dr. Kellogg, and we had a printing house there, mm -hmm. a large church uh, beside the college. Dr. Wilkinson spoke eight different languages fluently. He was a brilliant man. And as the years went by, of course, they moved to Tacoma Park, where our work was moved to. He told us about the Battle Creek fires. And Ellen White had warned uh, our publishing house that our publishing house was to print only Adventist literature. Mm -hmm. A fire broke out in the um, publishing house mm -hmm. yes. and burnt it to the ground. Mm -hmm. Ellen White, what later came out was that the night of the fire, the publishers had on their desk a book a spiritualistic book that we were going to print. You know, June, the book was actually Kellogg's The Living Temple that was teaching pantheism. You know, that God isn't a personal being, but a mysterious essence that pervades all nature. In other words, he's in the trees, he's in the water, he's in the plants, he's in human beings. And that night, the Lord said, this is enough, and he burnt the place down. Bur burnt it down. When I think of those judgments of God, you know, the first one actually was February 18, 1902, which was the largest and the best known Adventist institution, Battle Creek Sanitarium. The second one we know is the Review and Herald Publishing Association, December 30, 1902, because of the fact that they were going to print the Living Temple by John Harvey Kellogg. 
Wilkinson told us again that the firemen, when they would hear to call in Battle Creek, they would say, oh, we can't put them out. Those are Adventist fires. Wow. So they knew that there was something about mm -hmm. those fires that mm -hmm. could not be quenched until they burnt to the ground. He told us the story about John Harvey Kellogg. He said that presidents, congressmen, um, you know, people high up in, in Washington, D.C. came for healing. So you can see God working there to have the Adventists known in the center of, of, our, of our nation, okay? So, uh, you know, Satan saw this, and we were told that the uh, health work was the right arm of the message. Amen. So you can imagine Satan wanted to knock that out. Oh. What happened was Dr. Wilkinson said he actually saw Kellogg sometimes out walking down the street with a young, a handsome young man dressed totally in black. Kellogg never introduced this man to anyone. Really? Later, Ellen White was shown that the man who was walking with Kellogg was Satan himself. Dr. Wilkinson told us that Ellen White had said this, and I don't think she ever put that in print. Really? Ellen White may have never wrote about the man in black that was with Kellogg, but I do have statements from her. In fact, she wrote to the doctor, the specious, scheming representations of God and nature carry their charming, soothing influence as a peace and safety pill to give to the people in the spiritualistic views that Satan has instituted in your theories. So he, she did confirm that it was Satan himself that was influencing these pantheistic theories. In fact, Ellen White compared the living temple to the forbidden tree, and she makes this statement in letter 224 in 1903, like Adam and Eve, who took the apple from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and ate it, our own sheep and lambs are swallowing the deceptive morsels of air offered them in the pages of this book. I am instructed to warn our brethren and sisters not to discuss the nature of our God. So in two places, we can see that she confirmed that it was Satan himself because we know that Satan was the one at the tree who deceived Adam and Eve. From the time that this young man was seen with him, Kellogg's ideas began to change, his whole theology, and, and he started to get a following. And uh, mm. though Ellen White worked with him, he never changed. He yeah. had, uh, had taken this into his <clears throat> bosom. The Lord had to burn it all <clears throat> down. So. so this Dr. Wilkinson, was he, how was he received by his peers in the Adventist? Well, at that time, I think everything was okay. Mm -hmm. He was brought to Tacoma Park, and he became president of uh, our college there. He did? Yes, he did. And he was president of Washington Missionary College, which is now Columbia Union College. He was president of that for about 10 years. Mm. During that time, not only the presidency, but he taught all of the theology students, okay? Then men from the general conference came to him and said, Ben, you are working too hard. We're going to relieve you of some of your duties. We will send um, a, a young man to teach your, the your theology <coughs> students, and that will take the burden off of you. So, okay, um, Ben went along with it, and this young man came and he began teaching our theology students. Well, it wasn't too long until some of the students who already had been taught by Wilkinson came to him and said, Dr. Wilkinson, there's something strange here. He doesn't seem to be teaching what we have always taught and what we believe. Mm -hmm. So it was very insidious, but some of these brighter young men were picking up that there was something wrong here. 
Well, Dr. Wilkinson did not walk in and confront this uh, theologian. He just simply began watching uh, the mail. Uh, out in the hallway was oh, kind of a mayor. pigeonhole. There was a pigeonhole yeah. where all of the mail of all the various okay. teachers and everything He's was put in. So he and the <clears throat> pigeonholes are open; they're not closed. So Wilkinson's watching this professor's mail, and one day this Manila envelope comes in, and Wilkinson sees the return address coming from Georgetown University, and Wilkinson took that Manila envelope into his office. He steamed it open and he read its contents. I believe it was the first Jesuit university in the United States. That's right, it was. This is where Bill Clinton went to school. Yes, of course he was intrigued when he saw that address. When he opened it up, he found the instructions in there as to what this man was to teach no. the theology students for the next few weeks or the next month. So he was evidently getting monthly instructions as to what he was to teach. He was a plant, he a was. Jesuit plant. But what has often roused my curiosity, who were the men in the general conference who saw to this man getting in? And I will get to that a little later. Okay. Anyhow, Wilkinson <clears throat> called this man into his office and he put the mail in front of him. He said, I know who you are, I know why you are here, wow. and I know where you come from. He said, within the hour, the young man was gone. Never saw him again. You know, Ellen Once White says exposed. that Satan's chief works at the headquarters of our faith. Mm. That's a powerful yes. statement. Yes. Now, why wouldn't the enemy target our colleges, our theological departments, Battle Creek, all of these institutions. Absolutely. Not only had to, uh, to knock out our health mm -hmm. work, but now he had to work, you know, uh, knock out the rest of our, our mm -hmm. beliefs. And so um, somewhere through the years, Dr. Wilkinson began to write books once he had mm -hmm. retired from there. Now he was getting older. And um, he wrote two books. He wrote um, our authorized Bible, Vindicated. I, I read about that on Wikipedia.